Welcome back, everyone, to Sun and Fun 2008. Years ago, about 1975, my husband gave, brought home a microwave and expected me to feel grateful. I was not grateful because I saw it as something new I had to learn and something I didn't want to learn. I already knew how to cook without a microwave. Jim Piles is an extraordinary man. He's our speaker today. Jim is the lead project manager for the WINGS program and it's called the Pilot Proficiency Program and it's called that for a very good reason. We've discovered that pilots learn and pilots survive when they are proficient in their piloting skills. And this program is a new program and it requires an adjustment. In some ways, an adjustment similar to the one I had to make with the microwave oven. The first thing I did with the microwave oven is try and do something the microwave was not designed for, so it was a dismal failure. And that meant that I was right. I didn't need a microwave oven. So that first failure approved to me that I was right. In truth, I prefer to live life with a microwave oven. It's turned out to be a very good idea. Jim Piles has brought something to us that is new to the aviation. We are interfacing with you in a web application that once we get through the learning curve, will actually produce a service for pilots that benefits all of us. Safety is our reason for being here, survival and joy of flying. Mr. Piles is going to take us through the microwave transition. So would you please welcome Mr. Jim Piles. Thank you, Kathleen. You Thank you. Appreciate it day. very much. Thank you. Well, welcome, everybody. I hope you're having a good time here at Sun and Fun. I got in late last night, and as I was driving in, there was a nice lake off to the right of the freeway there as I was headed westbound, and, and I had to slow up a little bit to watch a couple people land their uh, aircraft out there in the lake. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I hope uh, everybody's here and having a good time today. We do have an important uh, thing to talk about today, and that is the WINGS program. So if I could, just by a show of hands of the people here in the audience, how many of you participated in the WINGS program, the old WINGS Pilot Award program? How many? So it looks like uh, about 90% or so out there. OK, great. So, let me ask a couple other questions here. How many of you receive, let's say, um, phase 10 or above of the old program? Okay, I see four hands, okay? How, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get scary here. How about 15 or above? I see two, now it's a contest. All right, so let's, let's jump to 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, we have, a, we have a 19 and a 20. There you go. Now, uh, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, that's a real good program. Did you like the old program? I see some yeses and I see some nodding of heads. I know those of you that are out there in the camera world can't see that, but, but that's great. Most people did like the old program. How many pilots do you think we have out there that are active pilots according to the registry? Any guesses out there? We have 200,000, we have 100,000, 400,000. So, so the, the, the guesses are up there. Um, we actually have about 860,000 active airmen, of which about 680,000 we consider active pilots in the pilot regime. So 680,000 active pilots. Now how many in 2005 do you think participated in the old awards program out of 680,000. How many do you think participated and got a phase of wings officially from that program? I hear less than 3%. That's really good. It was about 2.5%, about 17,050, if you want to have the exact number. And the percentage would fluctuate based on the number of airmen that we had in the database at that time, which is slightly different than what we have today. 17,050 people. Well, I'm happy to say that we started a new program with the wings and we, we took all the good things from the old program and we added some, some uh, value added items, if you will, to the new program. First of all, we took out the word award because we feel the best reward that you will get in participating in a new program is a higher level of proficiency. Now, 
Again, I'm going to ask some questions, and I'll repeat what I hear out here in the audience, because I think it's important for us to understand the old program when we have so many people in the audience that have participated in it, because we want to compare that program with the new program. Because we've had a lot of people come to us and say, you know, this new program is just way too difficult. It's way too much to do. And I, I'm going to say that we've done two things to the program. And the bad news is we did them both at the same time. The first thing is we changed the program. There's some new requirements to the new program. And it's based on proficiency as opposed to just showing up and flying. That's one. But the other thing that seems to be the most difficult is we've also automated. Now, if we would have just went in and automated it, we would have got some complaints, and it would have been difficult for people to get comprehend, but it really makes it harder to comprehend when we did both at the same time. So all of a sudden, just like the example of the microwave, all of a sudden, something you've done, you know, and you've loved becomes a hassle. It's different. But we felt it was worth doing both of those things at once so that it's one transition. And remember, the transition's really just for a small group albeit a very important group of p pilots that participated in the past. And that's those 17,050 that participated in 2005. And there were probably another 20,000 people that participated in one level or the other during that year. We just don't have record of them ever receiving an actual phase of wings. So that's a smaller group than the 680,000 airmen we would really like to get participating in the program. So we do have a problem there of convincing people and training people about the old system's changes and then also just letting people know that the program's out there. When I was asked to make some changes, and actually I was just asked to automate the old WINGS program, I did a very scientific study. I went out at Salt Lake International Airport and spent a couple days asking every single pilot that came into an FBO there whether they came in in a Learjet, a Falcon, it didn't matter what they came in with. It could have been a 152, uh, it, it didn't matter. Every single pilot that I could get my hands on that came in for those two or three days, I asked them some basic questions about the WINGS program. And that came to me a, a stark reality that we did not do a very good job advertising the old program. Because very few people knew about the old program. There were a few that had wings, but very, very few. And amazing to me was most of the CFIs that were there knew nothing at all about the wings program. So it's going to be awful hard for them to get people to participate in a program they know nothing about. So we really had our work cut out for us. And that's also when we found out, when we interviewed CFIs and other people, why they didn't participate. The number one reason was because they didn't know about the program. But the second one, and probably the most important, was from the CFIs. Flight instructors said, you know, Jim, I've heard about the program, but as soon as I found out there was no completion requirements other than for somebody to show up and fly, I did not want my name in their logbook. Because it was totally possible for somebody, and hopefully this didn't happen to you, and hopefully you're not one of these people. You probably aren't if you're sitting here in this seminar, because you have a safety mind. You're, you want to know more about safety, and you strive to learn things. So, but one of the things we found out was that you could actually fly in an airplane for how many hours? Three hours, right? What did we have to do for those three hours? Anybody want to throw those things out? Take off the landings. Basic instrument. And basic flight maneuvers, okay? Those were the three things, an hour each, respectively, for those three subject areas. But you know what? There was no completion requirement other than you survived the three hours. And I had CFIs come to me and say, you know, I was lucky to have survived the hour I did with takeoffs and landings. In fact, it was so bad, I wouldn't do the other two hours with them. But still, I found myself required to make a logbook entry that I had spent an hour doing takeoffs and landings with this airman. There was no way in the world I would have ever signed him off for a flight review. In fact, I probably wouldn't have signed him off to solo. And those are comments that we got from people. So I immediately found out that we had to do more than just automate the old program. We really needed to make some changes to make it viable, make it worthwhile to all of us. We didn't make it more complicated. We truly didn't. The process, perhaps, of understanding it and how it works is a little more complicated. I, I'll give you that. Because computers can be complicated. 
You know, they really can be. And sometimes they can be our best friends, and sometimes they can be our worst enemies. I've had a lot of days in front of my five computer screens in my, my workplace of days when I wish I could throw about seven of them out, okay, because they're so frustrating at times. And I understand it. We'll try to walk you through that process as we go through our day to day in this short time we have. Okay, we've talked about the old program and we said there was three flights, right? Three hours we had to do. So we'll call that the flight track. We had a flight track, right? And what else did we have to do? We had to do a seminar. Okay, now, what did the seminar have to be? Anything. There you go. It could be anything. So if I wanted to tell you about this really neat trip I took to Alaska and talk about all the neat places I went and all the neat things I did and never once say anything about safety, let alone flying the actual airplane, that counted. Because just about anything counted. And you know what? It could be 15 minutes long. You know, the old uh, man in the van type mentality where we took a uh, VCR, stuck it in a small little television, in a hangar someplace where the sound wasn't very good and things weren't uh, up to speed perhaps. You watch a video for 15, maybe 20 minutes. The guy stands up and says, now, is there any questions? Now let's go get the refreshments. And that counted. You got just as much credit for that as coming to a seminar or a workshop that lasted all day long that tested you on the things they were teaching you and really did some good to make you a safer, more proficient pilot. The credit was the same. D do you think that was fair? Okay. It, I don't think it was, because I think if you work hard at it, you ought to get credit for it. And if it's something that's small but still significant, you ought to get credit for that, but appropriate credit. So we have a knowledge track. It's just like the old program. We had a flight track and a knowledge track. Okay. We're going to explain those in more detail in the new program but I want you to be able to see the difference and the similarities between the two programs. Okay, so how long was a credit or one of those flights good for in the old program? You had to do it for one hour, but how long was the? One year, 12 months. Okay, so there was a time limit on the value of those credits, wasn't there? 12 months. Do you know what the new program, anybody know what the value is for the new program? Now don't get confused but it's 365 days. Okay, now we can do that because we have computers and it's a lot easier to calculate, but the point is, it's the same. If you get a credit, it's good for 12 months, 365 days. So we have a flight track, same as the other one. We have a ground track or knowledge track, same as the other one. There's just different requirements. They're still as good as long as the other program allowed them to be. Now, so you get a phase of wings, what else did that do for you? A flight review, okay, I heard BFR, but I'm, I'm going to do one of my pet peeves and say we haven't had a BFR for about 10 or 15 years, but it's a flight review that we do every other year. Now, we'll play semantics, but that's what it really is, it's a flight review. We took the biannual out of it uh, about 15 years ago. But it's important for us to know those things if we want to be proficient. Okay, now I'm going to take you on a little mental journey here, just real quick, because I think this is important too, because you need to get in a frame of mind of where we're going with the new program. So very quickly, my five-minute analogy here, I want you to try to think with me, close your eyes if you need to, but I want you to think this through for just a minute. All right, I want everybody in the audience here, and you people at home watching, I want you to think of somebody that's near and dear to you, okay? So get somebody in mind, somebody that's really near and dear to you, that you love, you, you care about, and that, you know, you take with you flying, you, you know, you care, care enough about them to take you, take them with you, or maybe you care enough about them that you don't take them with you, I, I don't know, but, um, but anyhow, you, you care about this person, I just want you to have somebody mentally in mind. Now, I don't mean to hurt anybody, and I don't mean to hit any soft spots here, but I do want to draw an analogy, so I'm just pulling one out of the air, and I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but this person now, we've just diagnosed with brain cancer. They have a tumor on their brain. And you have the formidable task of figuring out who's going to operate on this dear loved one of yours. It's operable. It can be fixed. Okay? So that's the good news. But now you need to find somebody. So you go to the first doctor. You know, you have 
three available. You know, there, quite frankly, there's probably three or four thousand, but you have three available in this scenario. And the first one is, you know, he's, a, he's good, he looks good. You go in his office, he's got a nice plaque up on the wall that says he is one. You know, that he, he's a neurosurgeon, he can do the work, he's, he's uh, legal. He can do it. And you ask him a couple questions. Sir, when's the last time you did one of these? He goes, well, you know, I, I did one a couple years ago. You know, and it turned out okay. It was all right. And I'd be happy to do yours for you. It's, it's pretty routine. You know, it's not something, you know, it's, it's not brain surgery. No, it's not, it's not anything that's really overly complicated. I can do it for you. $50,000. Now, how many of you would pick this person right off the bat? No, you probably wouldn't, would you? Okay, so you go to the second one, and she has this nice plaque up on the wall herself, you know, and it says she is one. I'm a, I'm a neurosurgeon. And you start asking, hey, when's the last time you did this? You know, well, you know, I've done, I've done one or two in the last couple years, and, you know, and, and they, they, they were okay, you know, they're, they're both living and, and stuff, and so, yeah, it's, it's okay. Well, do you keep up on the current technology and things? Well, I, I've read some journals here and there and, and occasionally uh, look into that, but I'll bone up on it before I do yours. You know, $100,000. So how many would pick this one? No, is what I hear. Well, how many would pick this one over the first one? Yeah, so this one's, uh, you know, legal and, and probably current. I mean, you know, they're a little more current. So now you go to the next one and they say, you see the same plaque, it's graduated from the same place, they are one. And you ask them questions. Hey, uh, you know, wh what about this? Well, you immediately know just a little bit of difference because you see AOPA's Pilot Magazine and you see some things on their, on their stand, you know. You see some current things that kind of attract your attention to them, right? But no, you see the, you see the latest journals, uh, medical journals on their table and you see books open on their desk and you start asking questions like, how many of these have you done? Well, I've done 12 in the last month. Uh, I've done over 3,000 of them in my lifetime, and, and they're just they're pretty simple routine. However, I do keep up on the latest techniques and skills that are required to do them properly, and the least evasive that we can be. $150,000. How many of you would pick the last one? Okay, now you're above the insurance, so you're just going to collect the insurance, right? No, but realistically, how many would pick the last one? You know, everybody would, and the rest of you, I guess, you're going to collect the insurance on the loved one. I don't know. But the point is, and I hope you can see this, you have somebody that's legal, they can do it. You have somebody that's legal and current, and they can do it. Or you can have somebody that's proficient. And you pay for those different levels, don't you? If you really want the person that's good at it, proficient, you're probably going to pay a little bit more because proficiency costs money. Now, I ask you, a simple question. Why would you put this same loved one that you would pay the $150,000 hands down to get the most proficient person you could to do the operation on them, why would you put this same loved one in an airplane seat next to you when you're only legal? If you're only current? Why don't you raise them to the same level of value when they're in the airplane with you. Just keep that in mind as we talk today. Okay, the WINGS program. We talked about it. We have a flight track, we have a ground track. Well, let's take a look at what that looks like. If you look up here on the screen, what I've already done, because we're not here to teach you how to log in to fasafety.gov, but one of the requirements is you do log in with an email address on fasafety.gov. You need to be logged in individually. You can't be logged in as a company or as a you know, a husband and wife, if you both want credit, because we have to know who gets the credit. So you need to be logged in individually, and that's on faasafety.gov. Well, again, we don't have all the time in the world here, so I really want to talk about the WINGS program, so we're going to go immediately to it. Once you've logged in, one of the first things they're going to do is ask you to fill out a profile. Now, I've already done this for this airman, but I'm going to go to the profile page just to show you how easy this is. Now you may ask, why are you asking me questions? Well, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. In the future, well, let me ask this. I have a gentleman on the front row. Do you think you're flying and the type of flying you do and the days you fly and the type of aircraft is the same as this young person over here? No. 
they're not. You know, I would be surprised if anybody in this audience today have the same flying skills and do the same type of flying on a daily basis. You don't. Well, why is it then that we would think that doing the same three maneuvers, takeoffs and landings, basic instruments, and basic flying maneuvers, would be one fits all? That's the way we've done the other program. And in fact, we did it repeatedly for 20 phases. Year after year, the same thing. And yet everybody's flying is different. Okay? Soon, you will see some things added to the airman profile on the wings page that will help you tailor this program to your flying needs and your demographics. It will be able to tell you the three or four most likely reasons for you to have an accident. In other words, here's the top three reasons why I might die this year in my airplane. And it's going to say, here are some courses that you can take to help you mitigate those causal factors in your flying so that you don't end up a statistic. But it's going to be tailored to you. Do you see the significant change that is in the old program? And we could not do that if we didn't automate it and put it on a computer. We just couldn't do it. The book would be this thick on all the courses and how to do it. So that's one reason why we automate. But right now, we're not doing that. We're going to use the KISS principle. We're going to keep it simple, Sam. Everybody else knows what it means, right? All we need to do is put in the aircraft category and class or aircraft categories and classes that we fly and that we'd like to use to participate in the program. So not necessarily what you're rated, but what you'd like to use to participate in the program. We're going to put in the certificates that we would like to use to participate in the program. And then we're going to put in the last date that we had a flight review. That could be your last wings phase, it could be the last time you got a certificate, or the last time you just had a flight review signed off in your logbook. Then we recognize, thanks to Brian Neville, my assistant, he fought this and fought this and said we really need to recognize those that participated in the old awards program in the new wings program. So we have a place here now for you to put in the phase that you accomplished in the old program so that it's it's here forever to show what phase you participated in. Okay, and now we only go to 20. I'm glad to report that nobody in this audience said they got more than 20 because that's all that was allowed in the old program. Now when I was up in Oshkosh last year, we had several that went to 23 and 24 phases, but uh, really the advisory circle in the program only allowed for 20. So that's how high you can go here. And then you save that. Now I've already done this, so I'm just going to go to the page. Once you've done this, then you're going to go to My Wings. My Wings is the page where everything happens. It's your history page of where, what's happening with your wings credits. Okay, And this has two different depictions of wings. It has a 13-month calendar. Why? Because the credits are worth a credit for 12 months. And we put the other month in there so you can see what's just fallen off, you know, so you can see what's, what's disappeared. Uh, it's hard to see on the screen up here, and it may be online, but this scale, as it gets closer to the end of the 13 months, it turns yellow and then a little kind of orangish red and then red to indicate that, you know, it's getting time to be thinking about these. Another neat thing about being automated is we will send you an email anytime something falls in this critical area to remind you that you have a credit that's about to fall off the scale. So you need to get busy over the next 60, 90 days and fulfill that credit again if you want to keep the phase of wings that you hold. Now in this example you'll also see that we don't have a phase of wings and you'll see the date that I put in for my flight review and it says right underneath that this is based on my information that I put in. Airman provided information because you could do that wrong and then you'd get a wrong indication here of when your flight review is due. Now notice mine has expired. Okay, if you haven't entered in your phase of the old program, it'll ask you and you can go back to that page and put in the phase that you wanted to participate in. Okay. Now I realize I'm running through a few of these things very quickly, but you, what you need to do is log on and go here and play. You can't break it. Okay. And if you do think that it's broke, 
Just use Bill Gates' three-finger salute. Control-Alt-Delete. Okay? And it'll bring you right back to the, to the front screen. Your computer will reboot. You can log back on, and everything will be back like it should be. So if you really get lost, you know, do what Bill Gates does during his presentation. Control-Alt-Delete. Seems to work for him, so it should work for most of us. Now, if you have a Mac, I don't know if that works or not. Okay, back to this. Well, I want to show you the, how similar this is, so I'm going to go to the Help page. And you'll notice that there's help everywhere on this page. There's all kinds of help out there to help you get to know how to do the WINGS program. Because we know automation's difficult, and we know there's some new things that you have to do for the new program. So we have help everywhere. Click on any of the help, WINGS help over here, WINGS information over here. Almost every page has a link or links to our help files. You get here and it's, there's a quick and easy guide to WINGS. There's WINGS made easy. And there's a validator, WINGS credit made easy. How do you get credit, how do you actually get the credit once you've done something? And we'll talk about that. But I just want you to know that the help is there for you. Really, we've answered all the standard questions that people have. On this help page, we also have what I call the decoder ring. You know, we're inherently governmental, which means we have to do everything in acronyms. You know, SPANS, FAST team, you know, FAA by itself. We have all these acronyms. We realize people don't know what AMEL means all the time, especially if you take it out of context. So we have a decoder ring here that'll tell you what all those things mean. How many of you have seen the, uh, you know, the KRB1? And you go, what in the world is that? Well, again, here's a decoder ring. But I'm going to do you one better. Here's a nice little grid that's at the bottom of your screen now that you can see. And I want you to see how similar this new program is to the old program. We have a knowledge track. And in the knowledge track, we have three credits. The old program required one credit. This one does require three. We have a flight track. It requires three credits. The old program required three flights, right? Three hours of flying. How many hours do you have to fly to get these three credits? Anybody know? As much as it takes is the real thing I'd like to say. You do have to fly, so there is a requirement, but as much as it takes. Okay? Because now you have to show proficiency at flying your aircraft. Whether it's a single engine or a Learjet, you have to show proficiency at flying the aircraft to the certificate level that you choose in the program to participate at. It's, it's really that simple. If you go up and get one flight for an hour and 15, 20 minutes, depending on what airports you take off at, you know, obviously here you could do it real quick, but if you were taken off from LaGuardia, it'd probably be a little bit more difficult to get someplace where you could do the maneuvers. So it really depends on where you're at, of how long this might take, but that's also true with the old program. But you can take off and you can pick three credit areas, three activities that you would like to do, show your proficiency at, and you might be able to do it if you're proficient and you stay current and you stay proficient, you might be able to easily do that in an hour and a half. Right there, you've immediately saved an hour and a half of flight time off the old program. And more importantly now, you've shown proficiency. You've said, I can do it. Now the theory behind this is, you're going to want to try to cut that time down, most of us do, to save money, and especially the price of gas now, we want to save that, that money. So that the theory is that you'll go out when you're flying, and you'll do things to stay proficient on your normal flights. You'll be thinking safety. You'll be reading the latest journals. You'll be reading the latest information on safety. You'll get the manual out about your airplane once in a while to do your pre-flights and you'll do some of those things to stay proficient so that when you do go with the CFI uh, throughout the year to get these credits, you'll be proficient and you can show it very quickly. Now, there's three phases now, because, or three levels of proficiency. And generally, you will find that the basic phase is for most of us. It's the private pilot or less phase. It means I'm going to show proficiency to at least what I could do when I got my private pilot certificate. 
I've got to tell you one of the funniest phone calls, but it's indicative of some of the attitudes out there that I received when we started the WINGS program. This gentleman called me up and said, Jim, are you the guy in charge of this new program? And I said, well, it depends. <laughs> if you're going to complain about it, no, it's Brian Neville. If it's, if it's something you want to praise about it, then it's me, Jim Piles. And uh, Brian's my assistant, so I give him all the you know, bad news, and I take all the good praise, just like any good person would do, right? So anyhow, I said, no, I, I'm the person. The, you know, the buck stops here. I'm the one that's trying to organize this and get it out. But so what does that mean to, to us? This guy was mad. He was upset. He said, you know what? I cannot believe that the FAA, or you, Jim, would expect me to fly at the private pilot level as good as I did when I took my test 30 years ago. Now I hear some giggles and laughing. Doesn't that seem ludicrous when you hear that kind of a statement? This guy was dead serious. He was serious that he did not think after 30 years he should be required to know what he knew when he got his private or to fly as well as he did 30 years ago. I was appalled. I thought for a minute, now I can really chew this guy out or I can, you know, I can laugh at him, but he's being serious. He truly believes this. And I said, I took a deep breath and I said, sir, you are absolutely correct. You should not fly as well as you did 30 years ago. You've had 30 years of experience and the fact that you're talking to me on the phone means you've lived through it. I expect you to fly 30 years better than when you got your certificate 30 years ago. He just couldn't believe that we would expect him to fly better than when he got a certificate. It's, it's, it's amazing to me. But we do have that out there. And those are the people we really need to get to with these kind of programs because they need to spend more time trying to be proficient at what they do and not just legal and current. Okay, so it's important. It goes back to that same scenario I gave you about do you take the person for the brain surgery that's legal legal and current or legal current and proficient who would you want to fly with who do you want to be in your airlines well regulations require the airlines and the commuters and the, and the 135 operators to do more than we have to do as general aviation pilots don't they and the reason is because the the general public who gets in an airplane expects the government to regulate that industry to the point that those pilots are proficient. But we don't do that for us GA pilots. We say it's up to you to figure out what that level of proficiency is. We're going to give you the bare minimums by regulation, which is what we do. The WINGS program I'm here to tell you is not for everybody. It is not. It is not for the person that doesn't care about safety. It is not for the person that thinks they're better than safety is and they don't need it. The WINGS program is for people that would like a structured program to help them maintain proficiency. That's what it's here for. There's a lot of ways to do that. Let's go back to the diagram. So we have three phases or three levels. The basics, the private, as I was saying. The advanced phase is more a level up. It's a commercial, some instrument work, that type of area. The master is more of the CFI, you know, teaching people how to fly. Advanced, ATP, a lot of really heavy instrument type work. And that's that level. It's a much higher proficiency level. It's not like the old phase where you just do it and do it and do it. It's what level do I want to get? and attain and maintain. So the other significant difference in the program is now you get a phase and we're going to talk basically the basic phase today because it's simple and we only have time to talk about one phase in depth. So to get the basic phase you do six things. Now we recommend that you do six things through the year which means you do something every other month. I highly recommend that you divide these up and you do them a flight, a ground, a, a knowledge, a flight, a knowledge, a flight, and a knowledge, so that you fly three different seasons during the year with a certified flight instructor so that you can talk about pre-flighting in the winter versus the summer and things like that. 
Now, some of you may come from Florida and there is no real winter. Not like, you know, when I left the house yesterday, the day before I was shoveling snow. So in Salt Lake City. So we have a different type of climate. And you do down here because you have hurricanes. We don't have those there. Okay. So you have seasonal differences in your flying. And it's important for you to fly in those different seasons with qualified people to keep you current. So that's the way we recommend it. Now, this is not to say that you can't go to one of our great uh, providers of simulator type training like flight safety, SimComs, uh, um, and the other myriad that are out there. Those are great. There's a place for all that. And yes, they do it more on a come here, do it in a week, and go home basis. You can still participate in the WINGS program, you can still get credit, and you can still actually do this throughout the year to maintain that level of proficiency that they give you on that one time a year shot that you do. Okay, so the basic phase says there's a knowledge track, just like the other one, except there's three credits. Now remember we told you that there's certain subjects that maybe this gentleman has to have and this person over here doesn't. So we've structured this so that there's core requirements. That's the red boxes. It's just like if you were going to go into college and take a bachelor's degree. They require everybody to take an English course because it's a core course. Everybody should know how to read and speak and understand English. Okay, so they, they make you take one of those. They make you take a basic math course. Well, this is no different. We're going to make you take certain subjects and, and show some level of proficiency or maintain some level of proficiency in those. And those are based on accident causal factors. Why are people crashing airplanes? And the number one reason today, irrespective of the make and model, category and class of aircraft, or even the ratings that you hold, is what? Pilot error, okay. Okay, we're saying loss of control during takeoffs and landings, but there's a deeper rooted thing that fits into both of those. Aeronautical decision making. Okay, so it's mistakes that we make in our judgment or thought processes or pre-flight planning, wherever the mistake was made, that led to us making mistakes when we fly and, and doing things wrong. So we're requiring everybody, for instance, to take the core subject, aeronautical decision making. Now you can take that online at faasafety.gov. You can take it from a myriad of other places. AOPA Air Safety Foundation has over 20 courses accredited in a new program already, and they're working on more all the time, along with other people that are out there, both commercial entities that charge money and those that do it for free. They're out there, okay? And then there's other subjects. We're not gonna go into those because of time, but you can click on these when we show you the page on my wings, and it'll clearly list what you can do. And then there's three flight credits. They're credits. They're not based on time. They're based on proficiency. We have taken, and I say we, Brian Neville, my assistant, has taken all of the practical test standards that are out there for every category and class of aircraft and has divided those up into equitable divisions for activities that you can do in an airplane or a helicopter or a balloon or any of the other categories and classes of aircraft to divide those up so that you can take that and show your proficiency at them. You show proficiency, you get the credit. It's that simple. As you go up the scale, the proficiency you have to show is based on a higher practical test level like the commercial or the ATP or instrument or CFI, like that. So you have core areas here, again, because we have certain causal factors. Remember the airman profile? Later on, as you fill out more information on your airman profile, it'll be hooked to the database that says, if you're 50 years old, you fly XYZ aircraft, and you do it mostly during the night, here's the three reasons that you're most likely, the people in your category over the entire United States or in your local area have had accidents and this is why and here's some courses that you should take and those will then become your core subject areas see the significance in that right now they're based on the US norms because we we haven't made it to where you have to answer more questions in your airman profile and that those norms will always be there for those that don't want to give out a, a, any extra information like your age or 
where you fly or the make and model of aircraft you fly. So you'll always be able to participate in it to the basic level and with, with basic parameters in your airman profile. Then we have electives. Electives are all those other subjects that you might want to do when you fly. And again, that helps a CFI and you as an airman tailor a program that's special for you. Do you fly a tailwheel aircraft? So you may want to practice something different in that type of regime than maybe somebody that flies a pressurized P210, for instance. And they want to talk about high altitude flying and pressurization systems and things like that. It's to allow you to deal with all those other flying areas to make it uh, a program that's, that's really aimed at what you do. All right, so that's all neat, but how do we put all this in the computer? That's the part everybody seems to have a problem with. Because you can see right now, the program's not that much different, is it? You have a flight track, it's three credits. The old program is a flight track in three hours. So we've actually tried to save you some money if you follow the program and stay proficient year-round, which is what we're really aiming for. It's not that one shot, one weekend, every other year. We want you to stay proficient year-round and think safety year-round. At least every other month, do something safety-oriented. And if you do that, we've actually tried to save you some money in that process. Okay? Then, we have a knowledge track. Instead of just going to a seminar, now you can get knowledge credit from CDs, DVDs, online courses, both ones you pay for and ones that are free. And they're all right here. And we're going to track it for you to show you how that works. Now, online, you go to My Wings. My Wings is where all this is tracked, like I said. And it's also where you go to get credit. Now, in a short period of time, I'm going to show you very quickly how to get through uh, this navigation that everybody seems to have problems with. My first thing is you have to understand the program. You have to be sold on the fact that you want to do something more to be a safe pilot. And that's where we've spent the bulk of the time, is for you to understand the program. The fact that it still is basically simple. You have a flight track, a knowledge track. The flight track's based on proficiency. The knowledge track and flight track have certain core subjects that we want to make sure everybody adheres to. The basic phase is the phase that qualifies you for your flight review. It's the only phase you need to get and can keep to maintain your flight review. The other neat thing about this is if at any time you can go to the wings, My Wings page and you can see all of these six credits, three flight, three ground and are required for basic, on your timeline, which I can't on this, this picture here, then you, you have a flight review, a current one, and it resets your date. So in effect, if you never let the six items fall off your calendar, in other words, when one's going to fall off like this one, you replace it. So it would come over here with a new course you've taken. Your flight review will never expire. You never have to worry about it. And it'll automatically track it for you so you don't have to think about what date it is. You just come right here and it's going to show you, based on the wings, this is the day your flight review is due. It's really kind of a neat program. And again, it's there to encourage you to have an ongoing safety program. No matter what it is, the idea is to keep it going all the time. Now, the, the graph I showed you of the basic and knowledge tracks, they look a little different online out of necessity because we needed to show you all the information that's there about what's happening for you. For instance, we have the knowledge track. We have the flight track. We have the same three credits that are due in each of those tracks for the basic phase. We just orient them vertically instead of horizontally so that you, we can get all the information in here about the courses you've taken for each of those credits. So for instance, this KEB, which is Knowledge Elective Basic. Again, there's no real scientific thing. They're all right up here to tell you exactly what they are. But remember, we have a knowledge track. And the knowledge track says that we have three credits. So here's our knowledge track. Everything over in the knowledge track, no matter what phase, starts with a K. If it's one of those core, C-O-R-E, courses, then you have an R as the second letter and an E if it's an elective. So you can already see that this really doesn't take a lot of thinking to figure out what we're doing. But there had to be a way to say that you got this credit as opposed to this credit. So we put the letters in there just to make it simple so that no matter where you're at, 
if you're on a site, if you're looking at somebody's CD, if you're on somebody else's site like AOPA or Safety Foundation, and they were talking about one of their courses, it's WINGS credited, they could put these initials in there, and, and you would know that it was qualified for uh, knowledge elective basic credit, or a knowledge required B2, basic 2 credit. So that you could tell the difference between whether it was an English course and a math course. And that's the only reason why those are there. It's not to complicate it for you. It's just merely to point out that this box to get this credit uh, has to have the KRB1 uh, accreditation. And that's really all it's for. We've tried to take out the big catalog, you know, like a college would have for courses. And if you've got a green check, it means you have the credit. It shows you the credit right here. It also shows you up on the timeline, if you hover over it, the credit that makes up that credit. What course did I take? The Art of Aeronautical Decision Making. I took it on 5-3-2007. It's worth one credit, KRB1. Knowledge, basic, one credit. And right here it is, KRB1. And again, here's the Art of Aeronautical Decision Making. So you, you just have two simple views. The timeline that shows you what's going to drop off, and if you've got them all grouped together, like these three hours over here. Or uh, you can look at it based on the actual credits required. So it's really pretty simple. But now you ask, well, okay, that's all great, but how do I get those stupid check marks on there, right? How do I actually get the credit? Well, again, that's really pretty simple. We've tried to make it as simple as we could. And by the way, we've heard the complaints. We are actually going to make a page here that looks very similar to the first grid I showed you, which is just credit one, credit two, credit three, and you click on those boxes. And it will not give you all this extra information. You can come to this advanced view. I hate to use the word advanced and basic view because we have basic, advanced, and, and uh, uh, master wings levels. But you'll have this simple view, and you'll have the one that we now have here, which is a little more detailed. So we'll probably call them the simple fly, simplified in a detailed view. But on this detailed view, if you want to know what goes in this box right here, or one of these flights, it's really simple. You just click on this little binoculars. And if you click on the binoculars, based on what you put on your airman profile, it's going to bring up a list of all the things that currently have wings credit that will fill that box. It's that simple. What do I do to get that check mark? I click on that pair of binoculars, and it brings up a list of all the things I can do. In this example, with what I put in my profile, which was airplane, single engine land, private, that's the only things I put in, I can do airplane, single engine land, air work. I can do tailwheel, I can get a tailwheel endorsement if that's something that I would like to do or have. I can do a complex aircraft, uh, airplane endorsement, high performance airplane endorsement, or I can get another rating, or I can take some of these commercial courses that are down here, or some AOPA courses, or if I'm a member of Civil Air Patrol and I, perf and I do flying for them, some of their training and proficiency requirements qualify for WINGS credit as well. But let's just say I want to fly. That's what I'm here for. I want to do the basics. So I just pick this first activity. And it's going to give me a very nice list of what I can do. And, it's, and it says you have to do this to the private pilot practical test standard. And if you don't have it, just click on it right here and it'll download the entire practical test standard for you. You don't have to go looking anymore. It's right here at your fingertips. And it says you have to do enough of these tasks with an instructor and show proficiency to equal one credit. And then it lists a lot of areas of operation in the private practical test standard, airplane, single engine land, that you can go do. And you pick four of these items out. You show proficiency with your flight instructor. They give you this endorsement in your logbook that's clearly written right here on the page that you print out Here's a printer-friendly version. Take with you on your kneeboard, and they, and they go and, and sign this off in your endorsement. It's very simple to do. You come back to this page when you're done, and you go right back to the same page and hit Request Credit. This page will come up, and it asks you two simple questions. What date did you do the training? So I'm going to click on this and say, I did it today here at Sun and Fun. And who did the training? Well, what happens if your CFR says, look, I don't have a computer, I don't care about computers, and I'm not doing it? 
Well, the neat thing is you have that endorsement, don't you, that they put in your logbook, because they're required to do those if they do training with you. And so they have an endorsement in your logbook. You take that to any fast team representative, any other CFI, any ground instructor, any DPE, and those people can and should know how to validate that for you. You just show them that you have the endorsement, and it clearly says what you did. Gives them the exact number. So all you do is go in here and put in their email address. Now, you ask them for the email address. That's the easiest way to do it. But if you don't, if it's somebody you've used in the past, you just click on your recent validators. Here's people that have validated you in the past. And they'll show up here so you don't have to keep looking them up. Most of us use the same two or three people all the time. So their names are going to be right there for you. You don't have to look them up. Let's say you don't know. Well, you can always go in to find a validator. It's going to come up and say, here's the CFIs within five miles of your house. Click on this. It's going to give you a list. It's that simple. Okay? You pick out the one that you showed them your endorsement or pick out your CFI, and they'll be right there. When you hit submit, and let me put a name in here just so that it'll go somewhere. When you hit submit, um, when you click on one of them first, it'll show them up here. And then when you hit submit, it's going to go out and send them an email. And it's going to say, hey, Jim, somebody has asked you to validate a credit. Now, CFI or any of these validators are going to have this little thing up here in the right left-hand corner when they log on that's going to say credit administration, credit validation. And they'll be able to go to that and see what, what they validated in the past and if there's anything pending. So let me just log on as somebody else here just very quickly. Perhaps. Okay, and I'm going to go back up here to this credit administration. Now, this is administrator, so there's a lot of stuff on here. But I just want to show you what that CFI is going to see when they go to their page. Okay, it's going to ask me to log back on because it's timed out on me. So let me do that real quick on this computer. That's one thing it will do to you if you wait a long time after you've logged on, it'll log you out. That's just a security thing. But when they go online, they'll go right to that credit, you know, validate credit, and they'll only have one thing up there, not this big long list, and they'll see this page that says, you, you've been asked to validate. Here's the pending validation that we'd like, and this is the one I just put in. It says, hey, they did this on 4-9-2008, and here's what they did if they need to look at that. Remember, they had the endorsement in front of them, or they did the work. And they just go over here and click, yeah, I'll validate that. I just did the flight with them. So they just click on validate. It comes up and says, gives them a choice. Do you want to validate or not? Because if I pick the wrong thing, like maybe a multi-engine, I'd send it back and say, no, we didn't do that. And I just go approve the credit and submit. That's all there is to it. It's not a big thing. You just go to one place. There's the pending item, you click on validate, accept, you're done as a validator. That's how simple it is to get credit, okay? Now if we go back to that original screen of this airman that was just here, and we go to my wings, we're going to now be able to see that this person now has airplane single engine air work during this month, and it shows up. It's that quick, it's that easy, it is not a complicated thing to do. It truly is not. Now, is it going to take you a few times to get feeling good about it? Yes. But it's well worth the time and effort that you put into the program. And it's only worth the time and effort that you put into it, just like flying. There's a lot of ways for us to keep current every time we fly. An instructor a long time ago said to me, when I first started flying, you know, 6,000 hours ago, said to me, Jim, Every time you get in an airplane, do something to maintain your proficiency. No matter how small or insignificant you think it is, every time you get in an airplane, don't ever get into an airplane unless you do something to maintain your proficiency. 
And I've lived to that standard all these years. And I think it's made me a better pilot. This program is a simple way for you to tailor a program, a proficiency program, for yourself. It's as, every bit as good as you make it. It's as complex as you would like to make it because believe me, there's over like 800 activities you can do if you qualified in all makes and models of aircraft, categories and classes. There's tons of things to do. We're adding new courses, new opportunities all the time. We'll meet with people here at Sun and Fun in Oshkosh to add even more of their programs and get them wings accredited and certified. Because we believe it's through us participating with industry and getting that information to you, the airmen, that's really going to make a difference in safety. The old program was a great program, but it's really outlived its usefulness. We need to step up, we need to raise the bar, we need to do more to be safer. We've picked the low-lying fruit, as you've heard a million times, of our accident causal factors. We need to drill down, we need to be data-driven, and we need to really drill down at why you and me are having accidents in our aircraft if we're going to prevent them. And then we need to tailor programs and our own training proficiency for us to be able to be the best that we can be. To be not only current or legal, current, but also to be proficient. I thank you very much. I'll stay around to uh, entertain any questions you might have so that we can uh, answer those. We have a time for maybe one or two questions right now. So we have a microphone. We'll take one. Okay, I don't have those numbers at my fingertips, but I can. Oh, I ask these people. How many people have completed a phase right here, right now? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, nine or ten, which is, you know, a good group here. Outstanding. And we, that's a good point. He's saying we need a way to, you're actually saying we need a way to validate that and get it to somebody without actually taking them in my logbook. Right. And, we're, and we're working on a way to do that right online. So it'll be there soon. That was the only problem. Outstanding. Now, let me tell you something else real quick as we leave, okay, that this reminded me of. You know, if you have any problems, write, there's plenty of places on the website to tell you right where to write and ask your questions. Ask your FPM. Read the manuals first because they're all right there. They're simple. They're pictures. They even I can understand. So try to read those first. Work through, your, work through your problems and then contact us. We're there to help you. We know it's a new program. We know it's going to take some time to get everybody interested. We've given out already to date over 80,000 credits in the new program. We have over 20,000 people that have already signed up to participate. Remember, we had 17,050 that participated and got wings in the old one. To date, we have about 750 people that have received their wings credit. Remember, we stress to do it over a year's period of time, so keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Our time's up. We, we'll answer questions here as soon as we're through. So thank you very much, and we're glad that you could be here today. Anybody that leaves here, go back. Go to the building behind me, and there's people there that got the computer, and two people standing by to answer your further information on the wings program. Right back here behind me. Right. So let, we have a few minutes. We're off. Uh, I think we're off the air now, and so we'll take just a minute to answer a few more questions. Any more questions? And and again, we have people out there that can stand in front of a computer to help you. Watch. If we can do it out loud, and we can keep the mics on, we'll just do it that way because it's a lot quicker, and everybody might have the same questions. So let's do it real quick if we can. And I can hear you. We don't need the other mic. Art of aeronautical decision making. 